Hello and welcome to Paul's Tips where I've got four tips for using blockers and pushers in the wonderful game Infinity Factory. So the first tip is attaching things to the front face of a pusher or indeed a blocker. Here I have a conveyor belt with a sensor, run it, it's ticking away. And the game has no problem with attaching any block to the front face of this um, pusher, like a welder, for example. Like that. Two welders. Like that. All work fine in the game. The thing to be aware of is that I'll go back to one. This block here, the one that has to move, will be has to be only attached to the block behind it. Otherwise, it'll be welded in place forever. So, for example, if there was a block here and I run it, that no longer works because this block I've put in is attached to the world and is therefore fixed. And that, in effect, brings the fixedness up to this block and means that one can, can't move. So if I take it away, it moves. The other thing to be really careful with is, because it doesn't look like this should be connecting, is Conduit does the same thing. So if I had run Conduit under there, yeah, it looks like there's a gap, doesn't it? It doesn't look like that should be holding it in, but it does. So the trick with getting, attaching items that are front of pushers is that there is nothing else around the square that needs, the block that needs to move, except the back face, which is attached to the pusher. So this allows you move tracks into place, it allows you move welders into place, it allows you move lifters into place when you need to. Now we're gonna look at doing the same thing again, except using a blocker rather than a pusher. So let's have a look at this. Imagine what we're trying to achieve is that when we've got a block here we don't let any other blocks come forward. We send them off in some other direction. So what we do is we take this piece of track here. I'm going to recreate it behind, delete it and then put a blocker there. So as we can see, it's working as it was in the start. No problem. Slice the first one in. And then if we connect, to it. So there we have it. So here we have a blocker attached to a piece of track which can then be used to retract when a sensor fires. Also can be done the same thing for taking welders out of the way or moving a lifter back, um, anything like that. The next tip is how to get a basic AND gate working with two sensors. Sensors normally work like ores in that a conduit is attached to a pusher any sensor which activates attached to that conduit will activate that pusher. So, for example, let me run it with that one on. It pushed. If I turn that one off, it pushed as well. So, basically, any block getting to there or there in this system will cause this pusher to activate reset that. So what we'd like to achieve is only when there is a block here and here that pusher gets activated. The way we're going to do that is to take a piece of the of the conduit out and replace it um, one square away. Let 
and place a pusher beside it. And then I'm going to need to support that pusher. It's a bit awkward. I'm trying to keep it so we can see as much of the, of, of the wiring um, clearly as possible. And then attach this sensor to this pusher. Now, I've, obviously, this can be done more compactly. I've got it done like this so we can see it as clearly as possible. So, what have we got here? We have the two sensors. This one, and they were both attached like that originally. This one is now attached to a pusher here, which pushes a new piece of conduit in. Now again, this conduit has to be free moving so that it can only, when you design the puzzle or the solution, have one attachment and that is the back face here to that. So if I run it with just this side active, this activates and pushes this in, but obviously this has not activated, which is what we wanted. Obviously, if I turn that one off and turn this one on and run it, nothing happens because this is not a complete circuit yet. Reset it and turn them both on. And there we go. So in effect, a simple and it obviously can be made more compact again. And how it works, it works by one of the sensors pushing a bit of conduit in that allows the second sensor complete a circuit. The opposite of this is possible. You can do if there's something here and not there by replacing it with a blocker and pulling the sensor out. So I hope that's useful. Um, that is a very simple and constructed using two sensors. And this is this in effect is the pusher which is working on that. This pusher can only activate if there's a block there and a block there. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is the double pusher. So this is set up to be a normal pusher, pushing two welders if this switch gets activated. So let's have a look at that. And there it goes, working fine. But what would if we like to do is to, is to have two pushers to try and extend double the distance when we activate it. So let's put that there. Let's add the welders back and have a look at that. So that hasn't achieved a whole lot. It's getting there, but it's still only one square pushed and we're just pushing from one square further back. But let's imagine, for instance, that when this pusher gets to here, there happened to be a piece of conduit waiting for it that was already active. What would happen then? So I'm going to bring it up just for clear, clear clarity of wiring, but I mean obviously I can't bring it this way because that breaks the rules. So let's put a piece there and down again. So, as this slides forward, it should meet this conduit here, which should be lit up, and we'll see what happens there. So, and that's working. Um, it does a double extension, but this is a bit messy, um, and could it be done any better? Well, the answer is yes, if all you want to do is this, create just a single moving double pusher, and it's done by replacing the second pusher with a blocker. So I'm going to just change its type there, run that, and it's working fine in its extended position, but if you notice, it extends at the very start, which is not something that's required. So how to stop this guy being extended when there's nothing happening is the, is the trick. I'll show you how. To do that, we need a sensor that's always going to be on. So I'm just going to create a sensor here and have it facing that block. That's always lit up. Now, the problem is if I bring it in um, like that. So it's um, 
I run that, it obviously will not extend now. But nothing happens because this whole section is being held in place by this rule about, you know, if something's connected in the design, then it can never move again. So that's unfortunate. But if I was to delete that, or in fact, I'll put one in above it first and do that. We now have a free floating piece of conduit here, which can fall in when the level starts. So watch what happens now. And there we have it. It does a little flick at the start, no big deal. But now this whole thing is retracted. Wait and see what happens when this gets to here. The two of them then fire in unison. So we get this double extractor. So that's that. That's the double extractor. The fourth of the tips. And that was Paul's four tips for Infinifactory. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like or leave a comment. Thanks again.